What's going on, B? I'm Jack, that's Maisie, and today we're gonna go over everything you need to know about getting lean for the summer. So I actually made this video about two, what was it two, maybe two, two and a half years ago when I actually was cutting back then um, just to get lean for the summer. Now I'm currently actually in a bodybuilding prep. But I'd go ahead and figure I'd remake that video, making a few updates to it. I also made a very similar video for how to bulk or how to lean bulk. And in this case, it's gonna be how to cut or how to get lean for the summer. So first thing, um, we're gonna go ahead and use this whiteboard. Hopefully you guys can see everything I just, freshly wrote it in some new markers so hopefully you can see everything and for those who might be skeptical i'll throw up some of my personal body transformations as well as some of those from my clients that have used a similar template obviously personalized to them to make a great transformation but first thing we're going to go over is our diet and that is probably the single most important thing when we're on a cut because it is essentially going to be what determines if we're in a calorie deficit or not so first thing we need to do, I always recommend a 500 calorie deficit. And this definitely depends on the person, but 500 calories is typically right around one pound of weight loss per week. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive, you can maybe go to 700, 750. If you're a little bit more overweight, have a little bit more to lose. But I think 500 calories is a really good number. But this does require you to know your maintenance. And essentially what you can do, I have a bunch of videos on my channel if you type in Jack Perez maintenance about how to find your maintenance. But a great way is to hop on a TDEE calculator online, put in your information, and you'll get a rough estimate to start. We will definitely need to make adjustments to that, but it's a good place to start. Next thing we'll go ahead and do is go over the macros. So as far as the protein, carbs, and fats, protein, I like to be between 0.8 to 1.2 gram per pound of body weight. Most of the studies and research out there backs that range up pretty well. Once again, when we're in a deficit, we are a little bit more susceptible to muscle loss or losing some lean muscle mass. And that's why when we're in a fat loss phase, I like the one gram to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. And when we're building, you can probably be a closer 0.8 to one gram. So I definitely like the higher range when we're cutting, but it's not necessarily essential. As long as you have at least 0.8, you probably should be good to go. Next, we'll go to our fat. So essentially with our fat, you need fat for your hormones, for your body regulations, all kinds of stuff. Um, so as long as you have 0.2 grams per pound of body weight, that should be a nice minimum. But if you know that you function a little bit better on maybe a little bit higher fat diet, you can go ahead and add a little bit more fat to it. Um, we got Maisie kind of in the way, but we'll just lift the board up for you guys. Uh, maybe up to here. Hopefully you guys can still see everything. Um, next, we've got our carbs. Um, essentially, the carbs are going to fill in the rest of your calories. So once you know your calorie deficit, 500 calories below your maintenance, you can go ahead and add your protein in. Once again, pick your number, whatever it is within that range, at least 0.2 to 0.3 grams per pound of body weight for fat. And the carbs will fill in the rest of your calories, essentially whatever you need to get to that deficit number of 500 below your maintenance. Next, we'll go on to micros. So I think micronutrients are very, very important for overall health, bodily function, but also keeping you satiated on a cut. As fruits and vegetables have a lot of volume per calorie, but also they have insoluble fibers, which will keep your digestion running nice and clean, but also have you feeling a little bit more full based on those foods. So we wanna make sure we have at least two to three servings of fruits and vegetables. At least if you start to feel hungry and you don't have those fruits and vegetables in your diet, add the fruits and vegetables first and then see if you're still hungry. It's a great way to kind of blunt your appetite. But the next thing I wanna talk about is supplements. And by no means are supplements necessary for fat loss whatsoever, but they can be very beneficial in a few ways. So one, I think a multivitamin is always a great essential. Creatine is also fantastic, is probably the single most backed and researched product out there as far as supplements go. Highly recommend creatine. Yes, you will have a little bit of water weight gain at the beginning, but once again, we're trying to lose fat. The scale will fluctuate a little bit. We wanna focus on fat loss and, and creatine will definitely aid in maintaining our muscle mass and losing some body fat. The next biggest supplement I recommend is some sort of protein powder. It doesn't need to be a protein powder. It can be ready to drink protein shakes, it can be protein bars, but some sort of protein supplement to help you reach your protein goals on a daily basis. Um, once again, I personally do two scoops of protein every morning just to kickstart my day with a nice load of protein and it really helps with me staying satiated and maintain my muscle mass. And then we have meal frequency and timing. And the biggest thing for meal frequency and timing, it is like the top of the pyramid. The bottom of the pyramid is your calories, the next pyramid is the uh, macronutrients, then the micronutrients, and then sustainability. And then at the very, very tippy top, you have supplements and meal timing. It's not nearly as important as people make it out to be. As long as you're hitting your calories, I'd recommend spreading out your meals. Maybe three, four meals is probably a good number. One meal a day probably isn't ideal, but it's definitely doable. People fast and can get in shape all the time. Um, and I definitely don't think you need to be eating six meals a day, setting an alarm for every two hours to eat. That's not essential either. And then we'll move on to hydration. Drink your water. Um, I have it written there in bold. Essentially what we wanna do is focus on making sure we're staying hydrated for performance reasons. And when we're thirsty, our mind might actually think our thirst is hunger and think you need to eat when a lot of times you just need some water, you might be dehydrated. So highly recommend drinking your water, making sure you stay hydrated. The next part, do you need to track to see results? So 
essentially to see optimal results you definitely want to be tracking your intake it's gonna make you conscious of what you're eating as well as make sure you're truly in a calorie deficit or at least give you numbers to look at that you could change later on all right there goes Maisie so I can drop this down um, so essentially what I recommend as far as tracking goes, I do recommend tracking is very beneficial to have some numbers and stats behind what's going on, but you don't need to, it's just like saving money. You don't necessarily need to create a budget to save money, but it's probably a good idea. So I highly recommend tracking in some way, shape or form so you can have good data points to go off of. I highly recommend meal prepping as far as it saves time and money. There are also meal prep companies out there that you could use um, if you are a little bit lazier in the kitchen. But personally, I like to cook my proteins in batches as well as meal prep my like what I'll call my carb sources. So I don't let's say meal prep full meals at a time. Sometimes I'll just be like prepping my chicken, my ground beef, my turkey, and then go ahead and making some rice, some pasta. And I can actually kind of mix and match things on the actual day. Day. and also highly recommend cut up your fruits and veggies when you buy them in the store so instead of like oh my gosh I have a cup of pepper and you get lazy like me sometimes you don't want to you already have three or four peppers cut up and you can kind of munch on those as you go next we have adjustments so a few things that you will need to adjust as you go on I actually just found a saying that I really like I don't remember exactly who it was but I like the analogy losing fat is like opening a tube of toothpaste so when you first open a brand new tube of toothpaste, when you first start your cut, it's really easy to get toothpaste out or lose body fat. But then as you lose more body fat or as you use more toothpaste, it gets harder and harder. I think it was Lane Norton, by the way. Um, it gets harder and harder to get that toothpaste out, just like it gets harder and harder to lose body fat because your body is gonna fight you a little bit, right? So big thing adjustments, your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis is going to slowly decrease. A lot of people think, oh, I have a slow metabolism. Your metabolism will only change maybe one to 200 calories throughout your entire cutting process, but your NEAT could change upwards to 400 to 500 calories as you cut down. You start to fidget less, your body starts to conserve energy more, you just don't have as much activity as you normally would when you might have a little more calories. Your body kind of goes into not like starvation mode, but it does start to conserve energy and not want to spend energy as much. So that's where NEAT becomes important as far as tracking your steps, making sure you're staying active and you're not just sitting around. Because if you just sit around, your calorie deficit won't be 500, it might only be one or 200. Adjustments will definitely be needed as you go, but it's kind of like a per person basis, a little bit harder to explain, and we won't get too much into detail um, just in this video. As far as groceries go, I highly recommend buying your own groceries and minimizing eating out. It's just gonna help with the efficiency of your cut and also save you a lot of money. I have a lot of grocery hauls on my channel. As far as bulking grocery hauls, I actually just filmed a grocery haul for my current prep. So definitely check out the channel for more grocery hauls and maybe some meal ideas. Alrighty, and the next thing we're gonna cover is training. So we got this up here in purple, training. Another big part of making sure like, hey, when we wanna enter a fat loss, when we get leaner for the summer, we don't wanna become smaller versions of ourselves, but we wanna become more defined and leaner versions of ourselves. So we want to try to maintain the muscle we have. And once again, for the newbies out there, you might even be able to build some muscle on your first cut. So here we have basically what I'm going to talk about is workout splits. We're going to also talk about intensity and cardio, but the biggest thing there is we want to be in the gym resistance training, I would say at least three to four times per week. Once again, I think personally the sweet spot is right around four to five days. I think three days you could do a little bit more and get a decent benefit from it. And then five or six days, I think six days you're kind of pushing it. You're probably not maximizing your recovery, but once again, maybe you have shorter workouts. You're only doing 30 to 40 minute workouts, six days a week rather than hour long or hour and a half long workouts, four days a week. So you kind of split it up, but I definitely think the sweet spot is four to five days per week. Um, as far as one of the big things I've been learning, honestly, over my like last four or five years, I used to think, okay, the more weight I do, the stronger I get, the more muscle I have. But one of the biggest things is my form kind of suffered a couple years ago when I was really trying to like just squat 405, deadlift, 500 pounds bench 315 I noticed that my form wasn't as good and my rate of muscle growth was actually less than I expected because I wasn't having proper form and technique and that's why I always say form is way more important than the weight you lift if you're not using the muscle that you want to target for a certain movement if you're doing a pull down and you're using your spinal erectors and swaying back and forth it doesn't matter how much weight you do you're not going to work your lats your upper back like you want to and you're not going to grow those muscles so form is so so important i definitely have a lot of videos on that actually i just came out with an entire series going over my current workout split um so as far as following a program that kind of leads me into the next point follow a program 
any half decent program out there will probably have a decent amount of workload. But I call it big things. Try to hit each muscle group at least twice per week. So frequency of twice per week. As far as working sets, I would say anywhere between eight to 20 working sets per muscle group. Obviously certain muscle groups have a little bit different set volume than others. And then once again, train with intensity. You wanna have progressive overload. Even on a cut, you wanna ideally hopefully get stronger or at least maintain your strength throughout the cut. And if you're not, you might be doing a little bit too much volume. As I just mentioned, I have a full series on my channel right now. Um, basically, I think it's called, what is it? Um, why can't I think of the name? Oh, Shred Series right now. I just went over my entire workout program, literally all five days. You can follow exactly what I do. It's a free program on my YouTube channel. You can follow that and make adjustments for yourself or what you have access to at your gym. Um, track your progress. I highly recommend writing things down, making sure that you're making mental notes of, okay, like how much did I do that week? Um, what was my form like? And then so you can kind of improve that over time. And once again, I'm a very analytical person, so I love tracking. I love having data. So it's one of those things where I personally like to track. Some people might say you don't need to track as much, but I'm a very analytical person. I love to look at data as far as my training, my macros, my progress, all kinds of stuff. So I highly recommend it for most people as it's very beneficial and basically just keeping an eye on things as you go through the cut or as you go through a prep. Um, also, a couple big things as far as how I personally like to make my programs or write programs for clients. And the number one thing is enjoyment. If you do not enjoy CrossFit classes, don't do CrossFit classes. If you don't enjoy going to the gym and barbell benching, do dumbbells, do machine. The one thing that's most important to me personally and a lot of my clients is what you enjoy because the more you enjoy it, the more effort you're gonna put into it, the more you're actually gonna wanna go to the gym, the less you're gonna skip and the more consistent you're gonna be, which is the biggest thing for results. So number one is what's your enjoyment factor. And then based on what you enjoy, let's go ahead and build a science-backed program. As I mentioned, the, the frequency, the set volume, the actual workload, progression over time, that's when we kind of dig into like the science and make sure, okay, we're hitting each muscle group, we're training muscles properly, and we're seeing the progress we want. And then three, personal goals or weak points. So once again, my personal goal right now is bodybuilding. So I don't really care what my squat, bench, and deadlift are, but if you're a powerlifter, if you're someone who aspires to reach a certain goal in your squat, you should definitely be squatting. I personally don't squat right now because my goal is strictly just muscle growth, not so much strength. So I'm focusing more on machines where I can push the intensity a little bit further and not have to focus so much on my form and my stability like I do in a squat. So once again, then you can make adjustments for personal goals as well as weak points. If you notice that your arms are smaller than your chest, you can bring that up with maybe a slightly higher volume or programming those to earlier in your workout. But I will say one quick thing for weak points, 95% of people out there that I either have worked with or talked to, you just need to get bigger in general. And most people probably don't need to focus too much on weak points until you get at least, I would say five, six years into training and you actually identify, okay, my biceps truly aren't growing that much. Not just they are smaller, they were lagging behind, they truly are struggling to grow and then you can have weak points. So that's just one caveat, weak points. Definitely don't worry too much about weak points or trying to program around weak points for at least three to four years of training. Next, intensity. So when I mean intensity, I'm not talking huffing and puffing. I'm not talking about how much you sweat in the gym. I'm not talking about your heart rate. I'm talking about proximity to failure. And in terms of resistance training, this is the number one indicator of muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth. It's not, okay, did you shock the muscles? It's not, okay, what, how much of a pump did you get? It's not, okay, how much did I sweat and how many calories did I burn during that workout? It is how close do you take a set to failure? And that's the most important thing. So intensity is the driver of muscle growth and definitely on a cut, we wanna keep our intensity high to make sure we're maximizing muscle growth. Once again, it's not soreness, it's not the pump. You can go and run a marathon and you'll be sore as hell tomorrow. I can guarantee that, or probably for a week for that matter. But just because you're sore from running a marathon didn't mean you grew muscle mass in your legs. So biggest thing there is proximity to failure with good form. Um, another big thing, not more, but better. A lot of times people are like, I'm not growing, I'm not seeing the results, I'm not seeing my strength go up. Should I train more? Should I do more sets? And a lot of times it's the opposite. We just want better quality sets. Maybe we can go from four sets to three sets to focus on our form a little bit more. Oh, Maisie's coming back. Do you want to come up here? No, do you want to come up here? I guess not. Um, but yeah, so biggest thing there, not always more, but focus on better. Uh, Maisie might come back. Oh, good girl. Hi, hi, can you sit? Ah, yeah, can you sit? Can you sit lay down? Uh oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe you want some attention. We go for walking a little bit. I need to finish up, okay? Can you move? You're blocking the people. They can't see what I'm talking about. All right, so next we're gonna talk about. Oh, hi, hi, hi. You gonna let the people see or not? 
All right, can you guys see? Hopefully, maybe. So next, we're gonna move on to some cardio. Hopefully, maybe don't block too much. But the biggest thing for cardio that I personally think the biggest factor is, is your general heart health. And that is probably the number one thing why I recommend doing cardio or getting your steps in when you're on a bulk as well as a cut for general heart health, for overall um, just blood flow, recovery, all kinds of good stuff. All right, so we're gonna have to lift this up again. Alrighty, so we are on to cardio once again at the bottom of training right here, heart health. So once again, if you're healthy and you're living, you're gonna be able to train. So once again, we want to do some cardio to keep ourselves alive and well, so then we can train, and then the longer we're healthy, the longer we can train, the more progress we'll make. Also, performance. Let's say you're going to the squat rack. If you do eight reps and your cardiovascular system is failing before your legs do, like on set or on rep six, seven, eight, like you're out of breath, like you can't even breathe, that's a problem because obviously what's failing there is not your muscles, but actually your cardiovascular system. So I highly recommend staying in shape. That's just a good thing to be in shape, right? Everyone wants to be able to walk around, walk up a flight of stairs without getting out of breath. Um, also, enjoyment. I have clients that absolutely love running, love cycling, love being outside during the summers, whatever it is. So we definitely work a little bit of cardio in, and sometimes it actually helps them eat more. Once again, if they enjoy their cardio, if they want to do that, it's going to be a factor in our calorie deficit, so it's going to let them eat a little bit more as well. And then also, as I mentioned right here, helps you create a deficit. So next, initially, we talked about a 500 calorie deficit based on your nutrition, but let's say you want to go ahead and only have a 400 calorie deficit based on nutrition and then a hundred calorie deficit based on cardio and that's per day So maybe if you're currently at 8,000 steps a day What you can do is go ahead and eat at a 400 calorie deficit Bring your step count up from 8,000 to 10,000 because every about 2,000 steps about a hundred calories burned And that's a way to add a little bit of cardio to help you create a deficit so you can eat a little bit more food Which is a great way to do things um, but yeah, once again, for me personally, on my prep, um, I have not really done any cardio. My steps have gone from about 8,000 to 10,000, and now they're between 12 to 13,000. I've seen my weight continually come down without actually adding any formal cardio, more so just taking this one on long WALKs to get my steps in. Alrighty, and then last thing, we'll move over here. Boom, we'll add, oh, that's perfect, okay. And the last thing we have on our list is life, or essentially, okay, hey, Jack, I still have to go to work. I still have a husband, a significant other. I still have family, kids, wife, all that kind of stuff. And I get it. This is where life comes into play. And this is once again, where something balance is key. In order to have sustainability in your life, in fitness, you need to make sure you're accounting for everything in your life and managing it the best you can. But as far as life goes, the number one thing I always say is sleep. If your sleep is effed up, the rest of your life's gonna be effed up. So if you're not getting quality sleep and enough sleep, before you do anything else, figure out your sleep situation and then come back to the video. I'm not, I'm not kidding. If you're not getting at least probably six plus or seven actual restful hours of sleep, pause the video, go watch Andrew Huberman's podcast on sleep and recovery, and then come back and watch the rest of the video. So sleep is the number one, by far the biggest thing, quality sleep. I actually have a full video. I'm doing a hundred day sleep study right now, and that'd be about hopefully um, in the next couple weeks and how I've gone about improving my personal sleep and hopefully giving you guys some tips as well Next we have stress alcohol and eating out So the biggest thing as far as stress find a way to manage your stress if your cortisol levels are up If your stress is up always throughout the day It's gonna be really hard for you to lose body fat and it's gonna have your body holding a lot of water weight So it's not gonna be very easy to see results and get motivated by that So whatever you need to do to manage your stress whether that be yoga going for walks meditation cold plunges saunas whatever it is do your best to manage your stress, and I highly recommend making sure that that is in check, making sure you're healthy, which is gonna help you get leaner, uh, which is obviously the goal if you're watching this video. Also, alcohol. So by no means can you not have alcohol. There's nothing you can or can't have. I always say this to my clients, I'm much more on the additive side, so instead of saying, hey, you can't have alcohol, you can't have donuts, you can't have pizza, let's just make sure we hit our protein goals. Let's make sure we have our two or three servings of fruits and vegetables. Let's make sure we hit our macros. And then once again, you can have a beer or two with dinner, but don't have maybe 12 beers on a Saturday as you just watch football. That's gonna be detrimental to your progress. Also, alcohol is gonna be higher in calorie. It's liquid calories, so it doesn't really fill you up. And I'll admit, alcohol is poison, and that's all I really have to say about that. Next, we have eating out. Once again, nothing wrong with eating out. I've been eating out on my prep. I've been going on vacations. It's a part of life. You want to enjoy it with your family, friends, whatever it is. But I start to make the conscious effort to maybe have a salad instead of an appetizer. Maybe just focus on lean protein rather than a burger, fries, dipping sauces, and then a dessert. So it's more so making the conscious effort to make slightly better decisions when you're eating out 
And then also go ahead and if you want to track what you eat out, I highly recommend that as well. Once again, it's going to be best guesses, it's going to be estimations, but still tracking that kind of stuff is going to be very beneficial from an analytical mindset of having numbers to go with that food. Um, as far as time management, so this is pretty much the number one thing as far as when I was in college doing this, currently doing this, it is making it a priority. If you do not make your health and fitness a priority, you'll come up with any excuse in the book, but time is never an excuse. Everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. Obviously everyone's situation is different as far as work, finances, family, relationships, friends, whatever it is. But if you don't make your health and fitness a priority, you'll never see the change. I really like the quote, if you want to go somewhere you've never been, you have to do something you've never done. So if you've never been below 15% body fat, if you've never seen your six pack before, if you've never been 10% body fat or super lean, you need to do something you've never done. And my guess is it's making it a priority in your life. And once it's a priority, you'll schedule it. It'll be a non-negotiable for you and you'll see the results roll in. Obviously life gains are a big thing too. Every once in a while I have clients that once again get a new job, have to move, have a family vacation, travel to Europe, whatever it is. And that's what I call life gains. It's not all about having a six pack. It's not all about losing body fat each and every week. Sometimes you focus on life gains, whether it's a new job. Um, I'm working with some accountants right now and during tax season, it is a madhouse for them. So instead of doing five or six workouts per week, we just have them at two workouts per week. We have them focus on their health and their steps. And just once again, they're super busy with work, but I know in two or three weeks, once tax season's over, they'll be able to get back on their full program. And that's kind of like a, a life gain phase where they focus on the career, their family, whatever that is. Sacrifice is definitely gonna be a part of this process, but you don't need to sacrifice everything once again. Family, friends, career, hobbies, all that kind of stuff can definitely be fit in. Just make sure you have your priorities straight. And then also, I highly recommend setting goals. Now, whether this be actual weight loss goals, time-based goals, if you have a wedding, a vacation coming up, I definitely recommend setting goals. Once again, those goals can change. You can move that finish line as you get closer. If you think, oh, I wanna lose 20 pounds, then you realize, oh, I actually probably need to lose 30. You can move those goals as you go, but it's definitely good to have a goal at the start just to make sure that you can stick to a plan and have kind of like a finish line you're looking towards or something you're aiming to do. And the last thing, time plus consistency equals results. And this is, if you take anything away from this, this is the number one thing I want you to remember. If you don't give it time to work, if you're not consistent with your current protocol, whatever that is, hopefully you have some someone help set it up or we just set it up here today, if you're not giving it time and consistent effort, you will not get results. You can't do it for one to two weeks and expect results. You can't do it for two weeks, take two weeks off, and then expect the same results. You have to consistently do it. The rent is always due. And that's what I think is so cool about health and fitness. It is that you can't buy it, you can't inherit it, you can't have someone else do it for you. It is the ultimate status symbol of taking your life into your own hands, making your health a priority. And I can guarantee, I don't think I've ever met someone who didn't prioritize their health and get healthier and then not have the rest of their life improve as well. So that's a big thing. And then last thing, starting point. Don't compare yourself to other people's starting points. People on Instagram, people on YouTube, even myself, once again, you should not compare yourself to me. I can be someone to help you along the way or someone you can look up to, but everyone has a different starting point. Everyone has a different chapter they're starting on. I'm on my chapter, let's say 72, you might be on your chapter one. Someone like um, Larry Wheels might be on his chapter 120. So be really cautious about comparing yourself to others. Everyone has a different starting point. As long as you're making progress, getting 1% better each and every day and working towards your goals, that's really all that matters. But yeah, hopefully this wasn't too long. Once again, I want to try to cover everything as best I could as far as basically how to get lean for the summer as it is. Um, I think, yeah, I'm mean, under three months away, like two and a half months away. So definitely want to get you guys in shape. This is why I can recommend. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. But once again, you can follow this. This premises has gotten a lot of people lean. Take notes, implement this information, and you'll see the results. I can guarantee it. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.